And my name is Dr. Jean Kagia. I'm a consultant obstetrician gynecologist in private practice, but I'm also the chairperson of the Protecting Life Movement Trusts. And this is an organization that um, try, teaches everybody in the country to uphold the sanctity of life, defend it from conception until natural death. Last year, there was a lot of UN cry that because of the lockdown due to COVID, that was 2021. The, the, the teenage pregnancy uh, has gone up. So I said, I told my committee, let's do our statistic and see what happened before COVID, what happened after COVID. Before COVID, that is before 2020, our statistics showed that the incidence of incest was 11%. Now between 2020 and 2021, uh, mid to 2021, we had already admitted that the girls, 10 of them were from incest, and three of them were from grandfathers. So these girls are not going up what everybody believes. They were small boyfriends, they were border border, they were teachers. No, they were being uh, attacked from the home. If the insecurity starts from the home, where does it go? We graciously got a report through the Inspector General Police. So they told us about the total number of cases that were reported, but they told us this is less than a tip of an iceberg because this is never reported in this country, although it is going on. We have had a girl who was made pregnant by her father. And when the girl told the mother, the mother and the father talked and gave her other beating to the never, never tell anybody. She was 10. And this man, by when she, by a year later, when she was 11, he actually made her pregnant. He took her to an abortion. We have had a bo boy who had made his 14-year-old sister pregnant. And uh, so the parents noticed that this girl is pregnant. They're about seven months. They called her and asked her, what, what, who, you look like you're pregnant. What happened? He said, it's my brother. So the brother was called. He was uh, reprimanded and he was asked and he said, yes, he was reprimanded. I don't know how they did it because the following day when they woke up, the boy had hanged himself and died. So now the uh, culture says that if such a thing happens, uh, then everybody else will die if that baby is born there. This was around Kisumu. So they shipped the girl to Nairobi to look for what do they do with this big pregnancy and this child cannot be born here. When here everybody will die. So wherever they came, they, were, they had heard of us, so we were able to rescue her, take her, and because this is a taboo baby, uh, the, the girl got a baby, the baby was adopted, and the girl went back, so I don't think those people died. <laughs> We had one man who had made his daughter pregnant. The daughter got the daughter got a daughter. And then later, he 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 made the daughter of the daughter pregnant. And when it was reported, the family was threatening the person who reported. And his wife and his her in laws were now up at arms in arms for what has been done. So is the society sick? If it is sick that these children have nobody to protect them at home, then somebody has to come up. Somebody has to rescue this generation, which is being destroyed at our arm, eyes. So we say it in Protecting Life Movement, we are going to do a national campaign against this thesis and bring this which has been swept under the carpet out so that it can be discussed because nobody wants to discuss it. It's such a, a subject that nobody wants to discuss. Some people say it's a taboo. Others say that it is an embarrassment. Whatever it is, the result is the same. It's destruction to our children. And if we care about our children, we have to put our hands together and fight this thing. So I'm asking if the society knows it's a taboo, 
Why don't they stop this taboo behavior and action before it brings up pregnancy? So the society has to wake up and everybody has to wake up. We have to realize that we are being hypocritical by not addressing this issue. And that's why our organization has said it has to be tackled. What is happening in the organization that is called National Syndemic uh, Disease Control Council? This is what used to be National AIDS Council. So we have partnered with them and told them the GBV, the worst GBV that a child can get, is actually incest. So they go from uh, county to county having brothers of what they call gatekeepers of the society. And the gatekeepers, they are going to invite the court county commissioners, their deputies, the sea chiefs, the assistant chiefs, they are going to Akoka, Yubakumi, elders, community volunteers, they are going to look at the church, uh, the, the religious leaders, they are going to look at even mobilize the police around so that everybody is educated on these dangers. And of course, one of the recommendations will be that every county should come up with a rescue center where all these people who are going through all these social injustices can be taken in. People we have uh, interacted with in terms of partnership for this particular campaign. We have, we have talked to the NCCK as being the umbrella body of the Protestant churches. We have talked with the KCCB of the Catholic Church. We have talked to the EAK, Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, and we are hoping that this will be taken up. If it's taken up from the top, it can trickle down to everybody else and people can think of programs which they can deal with. We, when we realized that the entry point would have to be the education sector, we went to the Kenya National Union of Teachers and they were so uh, good that they even gave us some two of their senior officers to work with us for this campaign so that they can disseminate whatever information we have had. We talked to the TSC, Teacher Service Commission. We got the same um, support so that they even gave us a lot of ideas of how we can go with this uh, campaign and the follow-up and all that. The then cabinet secretary of the Ministry of Education, Dr. Ruto, we had dialogue with her. In fact, she had said, you people, can you bring the content? so that we see how do we structure the, 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 the work in such a way that the campaign can become very effective nationally. We have, have had uh, some uh, corporates, like uh, the Cooperative Bank of Kenya has supported us financially in the preparation of this um, uh, content formulation. We want this message to go to Mashinani, all the way from the top to Mashinani. And may I hasten to say, when you are listening, you may think that these things of only the, the low class. No, it's happening even the high and mighty. Very big homes. Children are being defiled. Yes. And they're quietened. It does not to tell anybody. So when you look at it, it's a societal problem that must be dealt with completely. And I think this is the time. Uh, I, I think it probably can be brought close to the, the, the evil of corruption. You have corrupt somebody's morals, corrupt a child, destroyed a child, and destroyed her completely.